Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 5. For the first time, we could freely choose from any of our three main characters. But just like before when we first got to choose between V and Nero, this isn't a real choice. Back then, we had just gotten some new Devil Breakers for Nero, so of course we weren't just gonna snap pick to V. This time, we got multiple somethings new. Again, it's not a real choice. We got Faust, and in fact, before we even show Faust, we haven't even had a proper deep dive into our other new toys, like Sin Devil Trigger and Devil Sword Dante. This is a nice, uh, short mission, and it's pretty much all combat arenas. There is no level design here, it's just... Uh, it's just like an inverted tower. It's Bloody Palace, except we'll meet short. At some point, but for now, one foot in front of the other. So we can actually properly see Devil Sword Dante now, which is cool as hell, and send DT a lot in this mission. And then we'll get more into Faust next time. Uh, so we have our combo A, we have our combo B, we have our, uh, we have our. God, I want to call it air raid. No, we have our uh, aerial rave. And combo C. That's not with the style button. This is the style button doing this. Our style button in Swordmaster is now purely about summon swords. Pretty sure we only fight one of this enemy in this mission. It's very weird, uh, but it is—it's just the uh, upgraded version of the Baphomets. So, like I was saying, uh, this—the style button now for Devil Sword Dante is all just Summon Sword versions of his regular moves, like High Time, like Stinger, like Round Trip, and it gets even deeper than that because you get summon sword attacks following your regular DT pop now, uh, which change based on your weapons even. You get a new thing called sword formation here, where you hold attack for a few seconds and it takes like two stocks of your devil trigger, and it gives you automatic summon sword things based on your style. You could see the formation of the summon sword switching around based on which style I switch to. And these attacks with the swords, now that I have sword formation active, are coming out automatically until it fades, as it just did. <laughs> oh my god, it's so cool! And there's plenty of, like, really hardy fodder enemies to show stuff off with. And also a couple of aspects, oh, like that. I forgot to show the, uh, the donut move off for Cavalier before. It's one of my favorite things. It's combo B on the ground. Oh, everything can sass. There's plenty of hardy enemies here. I love when the back wheel grinds against them. Yeah, but the, the sword formations do different things depending on the style. It's not just, um, I guess, an aesthetic thing, how they're laid out. Uh, like in Royal Guard, when you have Sword Formation active, you get an auto-parry. And it lasts for a while, as you saw. It's not just one attack. And of course, we have our Sin Devil Trigger. It's so good! We have our Stinger for it. God, that teleport rocks! And we do not even have Sin DT maxed out. By the next time we pop that, or at, uh, rather, next episode, we pop it in. There's gonna be some shit to see with it. But already, just the unupgraded version is incredible. Uh, again, you fill it with your regular DT gauge, and it doesn't regenerate your health while you're in it, like your normal Devil Trigger. But you get a whole new move set. You get Air Raid, and we'll see even more. And you know what's insane about it? Sin Devil Trigger, the concept for it, originated in Devil May Cry 2 as a completely hidden mechanic. Remember Desperation Devil Trigger? 
then for uh, DMC4, Itsuna wanted to call it Majin TT or Double Devil Trigger. And the whole idea of fleshing that out just got scrapped due to time limitations of development. Rebellion was going to be Dante's tail in that form. He was going to go feral. And we'll do our donuts, and pretty much nothing can touch us while we're doing this. The entirety of that of the donut that Dante does is one big spinning hitbox. You just become un goddamn touchable. Uh, so Dante is the best he has ever been in this game, and there is no argument about that. There is just so much going on between how cool his weapons are now and everything happening mechanically with the sword formation, the Devil Sword Dante, the Summon Swords, and the Sin Devil Trigger. Oh, there we go, Swordmaster. I think I was in Gunslinger for that. Now we just get these rad, like, after-image attacks following our combos. And we'll show another aspect of Sin DT off up ahead. Because I think we have, what, one more floor? Uh, if the next floor is the one full of riots, then yeah. Plenty of room to just play with your new toys, which is another reason why there's no real sense in picking V or Nero here. Yeah, this is the one with all the riots and the spawners. So we'll see some shit here. Once we build up a little bit more gauge. And you can see the the um the hedgehog running through. Oh wait, not uh riot chaos, right? Yeah. Uh, you could see it spin through the donut, and ooh, it didn't whip, it just glanced off. There's nothing it could do while the hitbox uh, for Cavalier is active. One of many, many ways you could deal with them. Uh, also, your summon swords deal incredibly well with the Beyblade form uh, of the Chaos. It will just break the shit out of their arm. Oh! Well, that works, too. It works so well. Dante's got a lot of tools. Uh, and a lot of tools that are particularly effective against these guys. Also, I love this about uh, Devil Sword Dante. Is so much of what you would normally... What would normally be relegated to Swordmaster is just in its basic moveset now. With Rebellion or Sparta, you had to be in Swordmaster to get Prop Shredder, uh, to get Aerial Raid. Oh shit, he anti-aired me. Um, but no, not in... <laughs> not with Devil Sword Dante, it's just Combo C or just your regular air combo. And then uh, your Helm Breaker is the same input as Nero's. Uh, there is a double-edged sword... Or, uh, yeah, double edge. Fuck oh, yes. Uh, to having prop shredder edge your combo C, in that you can't just get it out instantly anymore, and that's about the only downside to it. Now, let's see some real shit. Can I find a healthier enemy than this? Uh, so if you hold square and triangle together, it will immediately drain the rest of your Sin DT, but it will do this! Holy shit, it's so good. We have another spawner to take care of, which apparently has just been active this whole fight. So we had a couple extra chaoses to deal with. This is fine. And we even glanced off of him with that, uh, with the, the this... Uh, ball rock double jump that does damage. <laughs> Holy shit! And, and it was style and distorted. Real impact. You can even see, while I'm in DT, with ball rock out, summon sword combos automatically. So there is still some merit to your regular DT form. 
And Dante now has a lot of different uses for DT, a lot like V. V has a ton of different ways to spend his Devil Trigger, and now so does Dante. He can spend it on Sword Formation, he can spend it on his regular DT, he can charge Sin DT with it. Uh, and then there's, of course, the Imperfect Royal Guard stuff, uh, which costs DT if you mess it up, or if you just want to block. And that's, mm, those are the basics of Devil Sword Dante, Sin DT, and Sword Formation. We'll get even deeper into that, plus Faust, and more moves for Sin DT next time. Looks like we still got a long ways to go. All right. Now we have our Divergence Points uh, missions coming up. And our final V mission of the game pretty soon. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.